Hello, hello. Hello, hello. Welcome to all of you who are in the room today, and also to all of you who are looking at this online streaming. Welcome to this demo day of Berkeley Skydeck Europe Milano. We are here to celebrate the nine startups, and this is the demo day where we have had the acceleration in the program who has been promoted by Berkeley Skydeck, Car Repair Factory, and Lend Lease. I'm Anders Nilsson. I'm the program lead for the Skydeck Europe program. Hi, everybody. I'm Caroline Wynette, the executive director of UC Berkeley Skydeck, coming to you from California. Welcome, everybody in the room. Welcome, people who are watching live stream. I'm incredibly happy to see you all, and we're incredibly excited to present some very interesting startups to you. So, the program is a six month journey. It starts off at Berkeley, and then there is a kind of development online, and then at the end, it lands in Milan at Mind, where there's the preparation for the demo day. There's a lot of applications coming in. We have had 1,800 applications for the Skydeck Berkeley program and the Skydeck Europe program. But it's a very tough selection process. So only about 1.9% of the startups are accepted. So it's a really great achievement to be part of this program and to be here today. So at Berkeley, we've been running Berkeley Skydeck now for over 10 years. How many people have heard of Berkeley Skydeck in the US? Most of you, fantastic. Um, how many of you first time at Skydeck Europe Demo Day? Raise your hand. All right, welcome. Welcome to our new friends. So for a little bit of background, Berkeley Skydeck has been around for 10 years. We've been accelerating the incubating startups, and at this point, it's about 1,000 startups or more. Uh, we are a UC Berkeley program. We are a university program and very, very proud of that mission-driven identity that we have to bring great solutions to the world to help solve the world's big, biggest problems. We're here in Europe and launching Skydeck Europe Milano with our partners because we saw the great deal flow coming from Europe. There's a lot of talent here, and there's a lot of people who want to help startups. You and in this room, right? How many investors do we have today? Fantastic. Advisors, advisors, just cool people who love startups. <laughs> All right, fantastic. Welcome, welcome. We know this ecosystem is growing. It's getting very vibrant. Lots of money coming in from investors, interest from, from founders and advisors. And we're here to bring UC Berkeley to join our partners and accelerate startups here, here in Europe. So, uh, one of the key assets that we have are our advisors, and they're instrumental in this program to help the startup to get through getting advice, being guided, getting the feedback. And we have more than 650 of them around the world, spanning from US to Europe, and they're a really key part of this program. I'm so happy to see that many of you are here today. The program itself has different focus areas. So one is the product market fit. We're trying to work on the product to see it's well positioned and it's being developed in the right way. We were looking at go to market so we can make sure that we're getting more customers, we're getting traction to make sure that we can show things for our investors. And then last but not least, and the reason we are all here in the room today is, and online is that we have the fundraising. This is the very important part because these startups have great ideas and they need the funding to realize them. Now, it's the next thing that we have, which is very important. And to make this program real, there have been two important components that serves like the foundation for this program. And with these, without these two partners, this wouldn't have been possible. So I would like to say a big thank you to Fondazione Cariplo and to Regione Lombardia. Thank you, partners. I want to particularly thank Carlo Mango, who's here from Fondazione Cariplo. Thank you for joining us and, and, and being our great partner. And of course, Lendlease. Do we have our Lendlease folks in the room? If not, I know they're watching online. Thank you, Lendlease. Um, yep. We're delighted to be working with you. So, 
So uh, this is the uh, program, and uh, we are now about to get to the next phase, and, and we have a special guest today, and uh, it's the great entrepreneur and professor from Berkeley, ladies and gentlemen, the super famous and the one and only Alberto San Giovanni Vincentelli. Alberto! Thank you for the introduction. Uh, as you know, I am Italian from Milano, and I am a professor at Berkeley. So guess what caused the uh, Skydeck program to be located in Milano? Is, uh, we partner with uh, uh, Caroline uh, to set the first major accelerator in the United States to land in Europe, and in particular in Milano. Uh, what originated this? idea. It was the fact that I love Berkeley, of course, and I love Skydeck and what a Skydeck has been able to accomplish. And I also think that the most important thing for an innovation district like mine, Milano Innovation District, is the capability of uh, mixing together entrepreneurs, uh, startups, uh, big companies, large companies, research institutions. And when mine set up its uh, program several years ago, then I joined Lendlease, helping to create this ecosystem. And so this ecosystem had, you know, federated innovation, the big companies, uh, you know about the move of uh, the University of Milano, of a scientific institution, and then of Human Technopole, where we are, which is a great research organization, and the presence of the Galeazzi um, Hospital. So what was missing were the startups. And so we started um, picking up startups from the Milano area and sent them to Berkeley, uh, where? At Skydeck. And then COVID hit, right? And so no more people coming. And so what do we do? And then if Mohammed doesn't go to the mountain, the mountain goes to Mohammed. And so the idea was, why don't we start getting our ideas in the places where they are going to have an impact? And so that came the idea of setting up in Milan. And so that's the reason why we're all here, is that we have been successful in uh, setting this thing up. And of course, uh, there are growing pains. Uh, the program is not perfect. Uh, we know we need to improve it, but it's been a great accomplishment to be able to set it up and to get it uh, running. Now, in, uh, in this respect, we are all here to demo day. Now, demo day is the most important thing in any accelerator, is when the ideas of a startup get presented to potential customers, but most importantly, to investors. Now, one thing that I always uh, uh, press my friends who are in the investment community is the fact, and this is certainly true in Silicon Valley, that venture capitalists, investors, besides the money, most importantly, help the companies to grow, help the companies to go the next step, help the company not to make mistakes. And in that is extremely important also the outside uh, advisors, right? The network that we have, the outside advisor, are set up to help the companies to be successful. So investors sometimes, especially in Europe, have this view that the only task is to give money, right? And then making sure that this money has a return on investment, which is certainly important, but is not the primary goal of a venture capitalist. The primary role of venture capitalists, again, is to help companies grow. And so that, for example, when I advise and when I invest, this is the role that I paint for myself. I try to help the companies to have success. And this gives me great pleasure. Granted, I'm an individual, so I'm not a venture capital that has to invest money coming from other side. But this is a mission of a venture capitalist. Often is, uh, we say that in Europe there is not enough venture capital. My take is that there is not enough of venture capitalists, not the capital, the people who know this, in fact. 
and so I beg you, investors, to look at the companies with the goal of growing together. Because one great thing, when you help growing a company, you grow yourself. So you fulfill a mission that is about innovation, right? bringing something new to the party. I have to look at myself when I started innovating or founding my companies. So the first one was 1983, the second one was 1987. Right now, if you look at the uh, NASDAQ uh, uh, market uh, evaluations, one is 70 billion and the other one is 75 billion, right? So slightly successful. Uh, but if I look at what happened during this, this period, we had our bad times. I mean, we went near bankruptcy, then we raised again, then we went down, up, down, up, down. This life in an innovative company, you never grow like this. You always have bad situations, bad times, and so to the companies that are here, the startups, please don't think that making a company big is easy, nor is impossible. It's a mix, right? Sometimes <laughs> you uh, are very successful, and the day after you are very unsuccessful, so you have to stay the course. Never give up. Thank you. Oh. All right, so we have a bunch of founders who are never going to give up and make those companies very big. Um, so, are you ready for some pitches? Are you ready for some pitches? All right, fantastic. You're going to be a great audience. Um, we're going to have all the nine companies in the Skydeck Europe batch. We're going to have two alumni from our Berkeley uh, group as well. We're going to zip right through them. They're going to do the famous five-minute Skydeck Europe pitch. Um, you can meet them afterwards down at the booths. And everyone has been working incredibly hard to prepare for you today. So please, when they walk on stage, big round of applause. When they finish their, their pitch, Another big round of applause. It really keeps the day going, keeps the energy up, keeps the air circulating in this room, which <laughs> we need a bit. Maybe we could uh, open some doors. All right, no further ado. First up, you would think that assessing the value of a used car is not a place for great technology, but this next founder is going to tell you how he's done it. Please welcome the CEO of All Occasions, Com Cancon Dussel. Thank you. My happiest moment as a child were helping my father at his car dealership. Whether greeting customers or cleaning the office, I was happy to help. One can imagine my sadness when I found out his dealership was facing bankruptcy. He wasn't selling NO's cars and his costs were too high. Car dealership like his struggle with expenses, including for car inspection, for three reasons. The reason number one, it's time-consuming. A proper vehicle inspection lasts around one hour and a half using the old pen and paper method, which encourages rushing and cutting corners. And this creates avoidable mistakes, which lead to the reason number two. It's costly. The average vehicle inspection has $250 in inspection mistakes. And in the US, with 40 million cars sold annually, we can see a $10 billion opportunity to recapture this waste. And the reason number three, it's inefficient. Inspecting a car either requires the seller to drive their car to the lot or the dealers to buy a car without knowing if there is serious issues uh, and, and damage to repair on this car. The result is a struggle to survive. Enter allocation. From two years ago, we are a multimodal AI car inspection app that can text, image, video, and audio, enabling dealers and sellers to agree on a fair value. And our goal is to expand market, um, a marketplace for everyone. And all of this, inspecting a car in less than five minutes. Here is how it works in three easy steps. Step one, click to begin a scan. Step two, walk around and scan the car body, wheels, interiors, engine, and maintenance report through a single video. And step three, there is actually no step three. This entire process only takes five minutes. Today, the US market, just for inspection, 
amount to 12 billion dollars. And this figure is continuing growing due to the rise of online car purchase and the semiconductor shortage. As our product gains dealers' adoption, we will next approach rental car companies, auction houses, and insurance companies. Our pricing of $25 for a single scan return same time in value to our customers that today experienced the $250 in average wasted cost per inspection. And for dealers with high volume, we propose subscription pricing and premium features such as automating remarketing collateral. Our competitors lag our solution for one of two reasons. Either they rely on expensive and inconvenient hardware, so think of an MRI for a car, or they rely on ex um, unscalable process using human annotation of offline photos. Our traction in a short period of time is remarkable. In France, our home country, our sixth proof of concept, concluding this year, have fully validated our solution. More than 10,000 scans, more than $800,000 saved for our clients, and more than 700 transac fraudulent transactions prevented. But our US opportunity is even more incredible. With already seven signed LOIs on the US market, representing millions in RIR, we believe that our best-in-class value creation solution can reach 50 clients and 30 million RAR before the end of 2025. So, think of the used car market like you will think of the Monaco Grand Prix. You need a team and technologies to see the track and out my universe competitors. My name is Com, I'm the CEO of the company, and I am joined by my co-founder and CTO Evan from MIT, who previously built technologies that was acquired by Renault. We are supported by a talented team of advisors who contribute broad expertise across our business and a total team size of nearly 17 people. Today, we are raising a $2 million seed round to more internationalize our product and drive significant business development to hit our aggressive goal. Buyers and sellers, sorry, Buyers and sellers um, struggle with an old market that incentives people laying and cheating through an inspection. But together, we can transform the car inspection process, making it more efficient, transparent, and reliable than ever before. Merci beaucoup. Thank you, Tom. All right. Off to a good start. We're off to a good start. We are off to a good start. Next up. Our next company is taking customer service and turning it into actual customer service. Um, please welcome the CEO of Do Work, the co-founder and CEO, Mushag Gavorgan. Thanks, Caroline. Hello, everyone. My name is Mushag Gavorgan. I'm the CEO and founder of Do Work AI, where we are supercharging customer service for SMEs. It's not a secret. That customer service field has not evolved much during the last decades. In fact, the way companies offer customer service is the exact same as it was 70 years ago. And the reason is simple. Companies do not have affordable and effective alternatives to serve their customer needs. So, to support the business growth, they need to hire more customer reps. But this is a problem for small and medium enterprises. SMEs don't have the resources that big corporations do. For SMEs, customer reps are expensive, they are not scalable because of time zone and language barriers, and there is high turnover. So, eventually, SMEs fail to deliver good customer service. And this leads to a critical problem. Pure customer service experience results in com customer conversion falling below 1%. The customer churn rate, respectively, increases up to 73%. This results in companies losing up to 30% of their revenue. And that's not all. Because of bad customer service, companies are virtually blind about their customer needs, questions, and pain points. Therefore, they cannot make data-driven decisions to increase the revenue. This is why we created DoWork, an end-to-end -end generative AI platform to streamline the customer service for SMEs. Our AI agent, can automatically run conversation with customers by connecting to company's knowledge base, CRM, 
internal databases. It can automatically generate insights, and what is more important, make actions based on those insights. Now with Duark, companies get five times more conversions, less than 5% churn rate, and 600% saving in cost, because now they don't need to hire more customer reps. At the same time, they have full understanding about their customer experience using their product or services. The global customer service software market is growing rapidly by 21% every year, and it will reach 58.1 billion by 2030. We are currently focusing on SaaS businesses that brings our obtainable market up to 600 million US dollars. Our business model is quite simple. We offer a starter plan for $49 per thousand questions we automate. And then premium plan for $299 to enable integration with our internal tools and provide actionable insights. In the beginning, we are going to do direct sales with email outreach. We already validated this channel when we were recruiting people for our customer interviews. During the campaign, we got 50% email open rate and 1% conversion rate targeting head of customer service in SMEs in the US and Europe. In a long-term perspective, we want to focus on product-led growth, where the SEO is going to be the main channel to fuel our loops. With very few efforts, we already got 20% of our traffic organically from Google, with 65% engagement rate. Compared to our competitors, we are literally in a league of our own. No other solution provides the end-to-end -end and ease-of-use capabilities that Duwork does. We decided to focus on these differentiations based on the findings we got after conducting dozens of interviews. SMEs don't have many free hands. They need end-to-end -end solutions that are easy to integrate. It took only one day for our first customer to have Duwork up and running. We are currently running three pilots that are going to convert to 20K ARR, three more contracts are in negotiation, and we have more than 50 companies in our pipeline. I'm a second time founder. I credit and set up customer service team for my first business from ground. And I made the business profitable and number one in the market. Why? Because we were outperforming our competitors by the customer service level we were provided. Razmik and I have combined 25 years of experience in building solutions for enterprises. So we know what we want to build and we know how to build it. During this time, we have been working closely with our great advisors, with Carly Wang, Matteo Mariotti, Amit Mehta, Clifford Tang, and Kanisa Wu, bringing their expertise in marketing, sales, and business strategy into our team. We are raising one million round to publicly launch our solution by end of this year, onboard 50 SMEs, and get to 500K ARR by end of the next year. Join us in revolutionizing the customer service with AI. See you at our boot. Thanks. Thanks, Moshe. All right. Fungi, just tasty things to eat, right? Mushrooms, our next startup has a very different idea and a very different solution. Please welcome the CEO of Rebex, Rodrigo Ferrar. Thank you, Caroline, and hello to everyone. What if I were to tell you that we can make fungi smell like a rose? Now, let me introduce you to natural fl uh, flavors and fragrances. These molecules that give taste and smell are everywhere, from perfumes to cookies to laundry detergent. How this industry works is that uh, consumer uh, good companies like Nestle or Unilever rely on flavors and fragrance companies like Man or Juvedan to design and manufacture the perfect smells and taste for almost all the products. But these molecules are challenging to source because they're heavily influenced by pests, seasonal location, weather inclemencies, and even political instability. Now, this is a great problem for our customers. Imagine trying to run an industrial business with these wild price fluctuations. It's crazy, right? But on top of that, there are extra challenges with natural molecules. They have high environmental impact and massive land use. And also, these are complex molecules that are hard to mimic via chemical synthesis or by other organisms. But thankfully, we have solved this by efficiently making the same molecules these companies use today by harnessing fungi that are super producer of complex molecules. That we ge then genetically engineer them so they can transform these complex molecules into our target ingredients. Our technology is scalable and safe. 
because we, well, once we have the proprietary fungi, we ferment it independently from such external factors. And our technology has easy access to scale-up capabilities because we use, fungi, we use fungi that are well used in the food and pharma industry. This allows us to deliver our clients the exact same molecules they're using in their supply chain today, but with stable prices, lower costs, and lower environmental impact. So our business model is to sell these molecule concentrates B2B to flavors and fragrance companies, to specialty chemical distributors, and even to cosmetic companies. We have higher efficiency and lower cost compared to competitors because we have patent pending technology that allow us to harness fungi that were overlooked by our competitors, allowing us to achieve five times higher productivities, hence lower costs. Our service obtainable market are our first fragrances in proof of concept pipeline valued at $1.5 billion. Then we can expand to the rest of fragrances valued at $16 billion. And our total addressable market are the flavors and fragrance market valued at $37 billion. You might be wondering how far along we are. We have our first engineers trained and we are evaluating fragrance production from them. We have a provisional patent in the USPTO and we have NDAs, an LOI, and we're cooperating with two important flavors and fragrances worldwide. Right now, we're uh, uh, doing our proof of concept where we have our first engineer strengths and we want to have contracts for future sales. Uh, in 2025, we want to have strengths ready for scale up and achieve first sales. In 2026, we want to have uh, expand to pilot facilities and have larger orders. And this will eventually lead that in 2027, we will have industrial scale and recurring sales. Right now, we're working with flavors and fragrances because they have the fastest go-to-market. But we can also make cosmetic ingredients, vitamins, and even drug precursors. Using the same technology, our platform can take over a dozen industries. We are the best team to take on this task, and we are determined in transforming efficient manufacturing. We have both a scientific and an entrepreneurship background from recognized organizations worldwide, and we have even created profitable businesses in the past. We have in the support of incredible and experienced advisors, and I wanted to take a moment to thank them for the constant help. We are raising half a million to achieve two different flavor, uh, fragrance producing strains, have one of these fragrances chemically validated by potential customers, and have contracts for pilot sales. Thank you for supporting us here and join us at our booth to transform manufacturing with fungi. Hey. Thank you, Rodrigo. Our next founder has a PhD in cryptographics, but she's not going to be hacking you. She's actually created a solution using her expertise for good. Please welcome the CEO of Skilled, Marie Pandavuan. Hello, everyone. I am Marie Pandavuan. I am the founder and CEO of Skilled. We are preventing AI-powered devices from being hacked. What do the future of health, the future of mobility, the future of defense, and the future of identification have in common? They are all using on-device artificial intelligence. And cutting off the ties with the cloud opens exciting opportunities, right? <laughs> For myself, I am dreaming of having a self-driving car. But, as Caroline mentioned, with my background with a PhD in cryptography and 10 years of experience in cybersecurity, there is absolutely no way that I let my kids inside this kind of car. Why? <laughs> because I learned how to steal the code of such a car and extract the artificial intelligence model that's inside. And with access with all the parameters I can make the car believe that the speed limit sign is a stop sign, causing the car to brake suddenly. Well, I am a good person, so instead of using that to create chaos, <laughs> I am building a solution to fix the problem. Artificial intelligence is expected to skyrocket by 2030, and without security, without safety, and without trust, the growth of the market would be severely limited. 
According to a Microsoft report, today 90% of companies aren't ready to secure artificial intelligence yet. This is a typical artificial intelligence algorithm. Companies invest in average two millions of dollars to build this, to create unique intellectual property and a competitive edge. Without skill, when this is deployed on a device, a hacker can steal it in two minutes. Skills provides innovative mathematical transformation so that the algorithm is locked to the device and scrambled. Now an attacker that tries to look at it will get no insight on how it's working. Skilled is not a theoretical solution. It is a ready-to-deploy safeguard with free proof of concept that are in progress. 300k contract in negotiation with the defense sector and the pipeline that is built to make us switch 1 million of ARR by 2025. We provide a software development kit with a straightforward business model per device annual license. Today, our go-to-market strategy is outbound with audit programs to scan our prospective client code for vulnerabilities and raise awareness. Tomorrow, we will be seeking partnerships with on-device machine learning models framework developers because their users are our customers. Our solution is software-based, hence fully scalable. Protect your model once, deploy it everywhere, independently on the hardware that's used. And clients will choose us for hard-to-find expertise at the intersection of cybersecurity and artificial intelligence. Mohammed and I have known each other for 10 years. We did our PhD together, and while I went to, I, I went to industrial research, uh, working on mobile payment, which abides by the highest standards in software security. He is now a tenured professor in software security, and he is in the Netflix Hall of Fame because he showed them how to watch Netflix without a subscription. <laughs> together, <laughs> together, we are leading a team of five artificial intelligence and cybersecurity engineers and one marketer. We are supported by B2B SaaS veterans that know all aspects of building a successful company. We are raising a 1.5 million seed round to pass an external security certification and reach 1 million of ARR in 2025. We are skilled and we are making our AI-powered future more secure. Please join us at our booth to discuss it. All right, thank you. We all know how to get to Netflix without, uh, so, so go to her booth for that. Just kidding. Um, the next founder has developed a truly breakthrough technology for at-home diagnostics of kidney function. It's working, it's not theoretical. I tested my kidneys the other day and I'm happy to say they got a 10 out of 10. And you can do that too after the pitches. Please welcome the CEO of GSENS, Louis Pierre Pauli. Thank you, Caroline. I'm Louis. I'm one of the founders and the CEO of Gsens Biotech. And at Gsens Biotech, we're revolutionizing healthcare by delivering diagnostics at the speed of life. This is Uncle Dan back in 1990, as you can tell by the picture. He was not aware that a few months after this picture was taken, he's going to be diagnosed with chronic kidney disease. And a little over four years later, he would pass away. This experience actually taught me that diagnostics was at the heart of why these people are taken so suddenly from us. The current options that they have for monitoring their health are really bad. They can either go to a clinic several times a week, which is very inconvenient and slow, or they can do mail-in testing, which is slow and it tends to be very expensive. So a lot of these patients will start skipping sessions. 
And what happens in kidney disease is that toxins start building up in their bodies between treatment sessions. And it always feels like we're too late for them, because on Monday, they might test perfectly fine. And on Thursday, they might be too sick to treat. And this is exactly what happened to Uncle Dan. He was hospitalized on a Wednesday, and by Sunday, he had passed. And the cost that we pay is in human lives. These patients are hospitalized on average twice a year. Their life expectancy after treatment is four and a half years. And about 30% of them will go bankrupt due to the medical bills. What you're about to see and what I'm about to show you is at the frontier of the human digital interface. It's the next generation of microchip biosensors. Let me tell you how it works. We're delivering true at-home testing for kidney disease in three simple steps. First step is sample collection at home with a saliva sample, very easy to do. Second step is run the test at home, get the results in five minutes or less directly at the patient's smartphone or tablet. And this result can be shared with their physician in real time. And the best part of it is that it works. We have manufactured and validated over 2,700 sensors. We have a paid pilot with one of the largest pharma companies in the world. We've published 10 peer-reviewed articles talking about the, the technology, and we have reported accuracy of over 99%. And boy, have we patented it. <laughs> so I'm very confident to tell you that after a human trial with 150 samples, we are delivering unparalleled accuracy without leaving the patient's home. We're changing and creating a new paradigm in healthcare where we put the patient at the center. And instead of showing doctors an old snapshot of the patient, we're showing them the movie. Biology is complex and dynamic, and it keeps changing. So should diagnostics. It should move at the speed of life. And this way, we give physicians and caregivers the opportunity to personalize treatment, move it around, and keep folks like Uncle Dan healthier and with their families for much, much longer. This is the perfect time for us to be in the market because the competitive landscape could not be better. Check this out. On one hand, we have mail-in testing companies that are notoriously inaccurate are very, very expensive and can be annoyingly slow to deliver results. You then have traditional lab centralized testing, which is very accurate, but it's truly inconvenient and people hate it. And then there's us. Our proprietary technology allows us to deliver immediate results with the same accuracy as lab centralized testing, making us 30 times faster than them and up to 70 times more affordable than mail-in testing. And we do all of this again without leaving the patient's home. We will sell our consumable through direct sales and distributors with excellent margins, and patients will use them three times a week according to current guidelines. By addressing the sickest patients in the United States, we'll tap into a market of over $1 million by expanding into the entire 37 million patients in the United States will service a market of $15 billion. And after that, the worldwide market for kidney diagnostics is worth north of $300 billion. I want to thank our Berkeley Skydeck advisors first and foremost for their passion and hard work. And I want to introduce you to the team that's making this happen. Florencia and I, we lead the business team, and we have combined 20 years of experience in business development for some of the largest multinational companies in the world. Esteban and Omar, our star scientists, are actually two of the smartest people I've ever met in my life and are two of the most reputable scientists in nanotechnology, biosensors, and graphene. Not only that, these two folks wrote the only book ever published on graphene field effect transistors by Wiley Editorial. And this is just the beginning for us. We have developed our solution for kidney disease, a detection system for respiratory viruses at the point of care, and this will allow us to move into female infertility to help women who want to conceive, and ultimately, 
deliver a CRISPR-based genetic test for point of care. We are offering investors the possibility to join our $3 million seed round that has already 20% committed to get us to clinical trials, FDA approval, manufacturing, and start turning a profit by Q3 2025. Like Caroline said, we'll be performing a live demo at our booth so the first five investors to join us will get a kidney function test on the house. So join us and watch us firsthand deliver diagnostics at the speed of life. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Lewis. OK. Our next founding team is a group of very hardcore engineers. They've been working uh, for years on how to make 3D printing go much better and faster. Three masters and PhD, and that's just the CEO. Please welcome the CEO of, of Dona, Anna Sachuri. Hi everyone, I'm Anas, the CEO and founder of Dona, and we are enabling error-free 3D printing. But first, I would like to take us back in time to the 1870s, specifically manufacturing in the 1870s. This was a tedious and time-intensive era of smelting, forging with iron, subtractive manufacturing, and manual inspection for quality control. Since then, we have evolved and entered into a new era of 3D printing, where you can print anything, almost anything you can imagine, but still, at the end, there is manual inspection for quality control. And that's only there where defects can be detected. Let me tell you how it works. So let's say we are printing an aerospace engine blades, and the 3D printing process flow is like this. We need two weeks of printing, two weeks of post-processing, four weeks of machining and treatment, and finally, two weeks of quality control. So it's only then, after 10 weeks, that defects are detected. On average, manufacturers repeat this process five times to get it right. And the problem is that 70% of materials are wasted, 60% of time is spent on post-printing, and the success rate of only 16% is achieved, which limits design capabilities. That's why we have created Dona, a real-time defect detection tool based on AI and materials science. Let me show you how it works. On the right, you can see that we are printing an aerospace engine blade. The status is good, green, that means that no defects are detected and all is well. As soon as there is a defect, the status turns red, and an alarm notification is sent to the machine operator with an indication of the location of the defect. Now, what does this mean for our aerospace engine blade that we started with? Dona detects defects immediately as soon as they happen. Thereby, we shorten iteration time. And with our unique approach, seven times less materials are wasted, five times less time is spent on post-printing, and the success rate is improved from 16 to 99%, which unlocks new design capabilities. We are testing our prototype across different industries with many manufacturers. And whether it's for making aerospace engine blades or medical prosthetics, we are making 3D printing cheaper, faster, and greener. The market is booming. Our serviceable obtainable market is at $5.1 billion, with a total market size of over 14 trillion. And Dona is offered as a B2B SaaS platform, as well as a licensing fee with partnership uh, with 3D printing manufacturers. At the start, we are focusing on the aerospace sector and expanding to the medical and automotive industries as our resources grow. As you can see, when you compare with the competition, Dona has broader applications and more dynamic capabilities. Dona is the only solution to detect both strength-related and geometric defects in real time. So the team couldn't be better. I have three masters that Caroline mentioned in mathematical modeling, mechanical engineering, and sustainable development, and a PhD in materials engineering. I spent years working in the aerospace industry with Rolls-Royce, Saffron, and others. Basically, I'm a nerd, and I love what I'm doing. Uh, Dr. Amel 
has extensive experience in computer science and cybersecurity, which is key to process confidential data. And the rest of our team are just as talented. We are overseen by some of the strongest advisors in the industry. Some of them are here in the room, and without them, we wouldn't be here. And so we are very grateful for their support. We are raising $1.3 million to convert our pilot into annual subscriptions, publicly launch our technology, and reach 1.5 million annual recurring revenue. Let's bring manufacturing out of the 1870s. Thank you. Grazie mille. Thank you, Anna. All right, how's everybody doing? Enjoying it? Having a good time? You're a great audience. Thank you for the applause and uh, before and after. That is keeping the air moving. Uh, yeah, let's get to the next one. Uh, we all love drugs, the kind made by pharma companies, but it, it costs a couple of billion dollars each here to solve that problem. Please welcome the CEO of Silica Corpora, Jaime Roseo. Thank you, Caroline. No disease looks the same when you look inside a patient. Let me explain you why. Here we have an example of three different women. All of them have one thing in common. They have an early stage breast cancer. If they go to the hospital, they will be for sure treated with the same drug. It's the gold standard for breast cancer called trastuzumab. The thing is that we can clearly see that all these women are different. They are from different ethnicity, different age, and probably different habits. So it's mostly true that one of them probably will have a good response, the other one maybe no effect, and the last one probably can have side effects. No disease looks the same when we look inside the patient because we are all different. So why are we all treated with the same drug? Why, why, why do we have one for all? Well, the breast cancer is just an example that affects all therapies. It is physically and financially impossible to make drugs for everybody. And the problem always starts in drug discovery. It's a very expensive and ineffective process because it's a screaming process. It takes millions of euros and years. We compare usually like fishing. So we go to the ocean, we throw a rod, we never know what we're going to get. The solution to this is drug design. With artificial intelligence, we are capable of designing our own molecules with the exact properties we need. So it's basically, we don't know, need to go to fish anymore. We just design our own fish. Ladies and gentlemen, that's why Silica Corpora was born. And our mission is to design the next generation of antibody therapeutics using generative AI. Our approach works. And uh, allow me to be a bit more technical in this stage. Uh, we go back to the same example that I put first, uh, trastuzumab. We know that the most important part of an antibody is the part that binds the target or the tumor cell. This part has seven sextillion possibilities. That's a lot of zeros, okay? With our platform, we can just ask, please generate this part of the antibody. And we did. We went from seven sextillion to 600 candidates in days. And how do we know that we are on the right path? Because the original trastuzumab was there. In other words, we just made the ocean the size of a swimming pool, and we put the 100 kilo tuna inside the swimming pool. So I would say that it's super cool to fish like that, right? Uh, let's talk about the market size. Well, our market is very wealthy because of the high demand of antibodies. Tam and Sam are very big and growing significantly. What is most importantly here is that our service obtainable market, the AI in drug discovery for antibodies, is only of 600 million right now, but it's growing at an outstanding speed of 45% KGAR for the next four years. That's a lot, and it's a big market opportunity. And of course, with a market opportunity that big, it's normal that other people is trying to fill the space. However, we have a set of characteristics that makes us unique. For example, the de novo antibody design, the cloud lab automation vision, the sequence-based methods we don't use for these structures, and our strong network, which is usually undervalued, but find talent these days is very complicated. Why do we think we can make it? Our team covers the three pillars that are needed in an AI biotech company. We have Tim, our CTO. He is in charge of the technology, more than seven years in AI ML for antibodies. Anna, our CSO, 
PhD and postdoc in immunology from Charité, and myself, Jaime, physicist, engineer, MBA, and with international management experience. In addition to that, we have our Berkeley Scattered Advisors that are going to help us in life sciences, managing, uh, branding, and fundraising. How we intend to make money? Very easy. We sell antibody candidates to go to clinical trials. The first strategy is the go-to-market strategy. We do antibody design by contract fees. Once we start generating trust, we can deepen partnerships that do out-licensing of our own molecules. And in the end, if some of these ones make it to the market, we intend to have some royalty payments. And of course, this is where the big cake is. How is it going right now? We secured already 300,000 euros of pre-seed funding in our first year as a company. Our platform is already validated in Silico in three different use cases, and we have the first paid customers acquired. One of them is a publicly traded company, and the other one, a university hospital. So in a world that Silica Corpora accomplishes all these goals, what can happen? Well, right now, as we said, we are doing antibody design tests already, and this is much better than the status quo. But in three years, we can start working on multi-target antibodies, meaning the power of two drugs combined in one. In five years, we can do the robotic lab automation of our platform, meaning that we can reduce the human error factor at all. In the end, if we accomplish everything, we can do personalized therapies. You go to the hospital, you get diagnosed, and with your own data, we can create a drug for you. You leave the hospital cured. Well, the market is growing, everything is growing, of course, in that field, and we need to grow as well. That's why for the next 18-month runway, we're asking for 3 million, in which we intend to complete six projects, do the initial cloud lab integration, and complete our IP strategy. We are unlocking the door of personalized therapies. Let's go for the one drug for all to the one for one for all. Thank you. Thank you, Jaime. All right, I realize why it's so hot in here. Why is it so hot in here? Because the startups are hot. Yes, exactly. Fantastic. All right, we're getting towards the end. We've got a company that's going to turn your project management into something that actually makes you money. Who here has made money on every single project they man managed? Yeah, me neither. Please welcome the CEO of Fintelect, Jaeger Bolesky. Thank you. Hi, my name is Igor. I'm here to tell you how a small service B2B company can get more profits while doing less finances with Fintelect. I used to have this kind of company. We were the web studio doing amazing work for the clients all around the world. We were winning world-class design awards and we grew from zero to 1.5 million in revenue. But then came a moment when we went bankrupt. It was because we didn't know the economics of our projects. We kept adding the contract that didn't bring the company any, any money. And that is what let us down. If only I had the necessary financial expertise, that wouldn't happen. This kind of company is not the single case. We have around a million companies like those in EU alone. And only 4% of them have any sort of financial expert on board. So the single most important thing in a business, which is money, doesn't meet anybody who's taking care of it. Here comes the profit drain. It's 80% of the project that have wrong price quotes in the beginning of the contract. So the price that you tell to your client has nothing to do with reality. 20% of projects are actually below profitable so the company doesn't earn anything from them, and it's dragging them down. And it's 600 hours that is spent for repeatable financial tasks that should be automated. Altogether, it's 100k under earning for the company. And once you multiply this by the number of companies in the market, it's the multi-billion problem. This is why we are delivering Fintelect, the streamlined finance platform for professional service teams. This is the current stack that we are challenging, a set of disconnected tools and spreadsheets that don't come together and result in the profit loss. With Fintelect, we streamline data from various sources like timesheets, banking APIs, and CRMs, turn them to financial insights, and minimize the profit loss. It's 100% correct project price quotes because they're based on the most accurate data from the company. 
Because of that, it's only three minutes that is needed to deliver the price quote for the client. And it's around 10K project margin saving that we help companies to achieve. It's also around 400 hours that we save for these companies to invest more wisely in growth, sales, and other important activity instead of just a monkey job. And it takes less than five seconds to check if your invoice has been paid or to check on your correct cash flow statement. Well, there are apps that are around this domain. We are not alone. But usually they tend to be more generic, so they don't have necessary features for the project-based model. No estimates, no pricing model whatsoever. And we are much more integratable comparing to enterprise black boxes. They tend to have some of those features, but they are close to impossible to be installed for the small team. Well, this market is a dark horse. It's not really well served, so this makes it a best opportunity. We have estimated that it's around 200 million obtainable share that we can go after in EU and US. We know our customers and we know our market pretty well. And we also know the channels that we will use for that. This would be communities, professional clubs and association these guys are really active in. Also, the outbound. All of these companies are on LinkedIn, so we are. And partnerships with complementary apps and solutions. We can both plug in into their APIs, but also to their customer database. We are subscription SaaS, so we have three plans. The light version for the self-service, the pro subscription, and the custom solution with enhanced API and custom features. We are not talking concepts. We have went live, and we already have paid customers, so we have tractions. It's 29 customers that enjoyed FinSelect in paid mode. There's more trialing, and we have we have a growing pipeline of sales qualified leads that increases on a weekly basis. Fintelect is a team of guys who used to own these companies, like me and Daniel. So we've been in their shoes, we know exactly what they need. And also the guys who used to work for these companies, like Eugene, Paolo, and Bogdan. So we have both necessary experience and expertise needed to deliver. We also have the great minds from Berkeley who back us up and help us avoid common pitfalls that founders always do. So we don't. And we're currently raising half a million to get to 25K MRR and potential break-even point. Join us on a world where there's less finances and more profits. Thank you. Sure. All right. I'm very pleased for a very special presentation for you. Our next founder, who they are teeing up up there in the booth there is presenting to you from Israel, where he has had to go because of what's going on there. But he is completely dedicated to a startup. He's joining us via Zoom. Please welcome the CEO of Sefi AI, Or David. Hi, everyone. I'm disabled sharing. Okay. Hi everyone. My name is Or and I'm the co-founder of Sefi AI. I'm in Israel and couldn't make it, but let me tell you our story. Every dream, every imagined story we tell our kids still can be an epic, immersive game in minutes. My six years old daughter, Ella, comes to me every morning to tell me about her dreams in such vivid colors. Many kids are, and I'm sure some parents in the audience know this, that creativity level is of course also common in the ages of eight, 12, 14, and basically Gen Z and Gen Alpha. So let me tell you something about Gen Z and Gen Alpha and how they became a problem for mainstream media companies as they shift to more active engagement. Gaming is disrupting the media industry. More than half of them say they socialize in gaming platforms. They have movie nights there. They love to co-create games together 
new generations are not entertainment consumers. They are entertainment creators. Their mobile minutes goes up year over year, but it's all towards gaming. And social media and TV streaming gradually lose views and revenues on those users for social gaming platforms like Roblox, Fortnite, and others. Those scary numbers created a real problem for companies and ignited an ongoing trend of non-gaming companies starting to offer gaming to meet that demand. Together, having over 1 billion gamers already, but without offering social game creation, they can compete with social gaming platforms and their attractiveness to new generations. Users build communities and communities monetize. So how can we leverage those kind of companies, billions of users, to build game communities on their platforms? How can we unlock people's creativity? Cephi lets media companies unlock more engagement time and leverage their users to grow thriving gaming communities, a UGC economy on their platform. Our generative game engine, which you see before you, lowers game production efforts to near zero. For game enthusiasts, this means allowing the untapped mass market to create games in minutes naturally using only words, where they already spend their time. For media companies, this means that by integrating our engine, they can increase average revenue per user by adding the value users want. The benefit of UGC content is that a passionate player base can, e can efficiently scale their content and reduce production costs for the company. So how will they do that? Our engine is hosted on our partners platform. There, a game tab, for instance, leads users to generate games as easy as you saw it. In minutes, users can play and share their games with their followers and friends, and revenue streams are divided between Cephi and the host. As we want to be there for those media companies, this business model is to work directly with them, a B2B2C approach, getting users through them where they already spend their time eliminating a B2C race. Revenue comes from users through in-game monetization streams and are divided between Cephi and the host. So for 2024, for instance, by reaching only a fraction of those companies' user base with a conservative gaming approach of $5 per user, we aim to finish with 15 million in revenue where a hosting company gets a third. And this is one part of the go-to-market. We are already in direct business development talks with many companies, starting with SMB streaming and social companies. They have the biggest pain and highest demand for game creation. Also, we will work with gaming influencers to boost adoption on those platforms through streaming events, hackathons with followers, and others. Starting with our TAM, we are working in the fastest growing entertainment vertical. And inside the gaming industry, we focus on a niche of UGC game engine by leveraging various generative AI models running simultaneously. And we start by enabling users to create what is called open world casual games. So our space comprised of direct competition coming from generative startups, though most of them are B2C companies which focus on assisting or semi-producing games without reaching a no-code engine. And indirect competition coming from game dev platforms you already know, those are closed ecosystems. They cannot be played and shared outside and their creation systems don't reach mass market simple users. And this is Safi's moat. We've built our own in-house generative engine for this, running various AI diffusion models simultaneously to generate interactive words in minutes. We have a unique advisory board coming from Berkeley Skydeck, two upcoming pilots with media SMBs potentially reaching already 80 million monthly active users, and three SMEs standing by for a beta, which will be launched by the end of the year, right after closing our round. We are three co-founders from with years of experience and super diverse backgrounds from immersive game design, diverse software skills, and strategy and business development background. Berkeley Skydeck supported us with a remarkable advisory team, industry and strategy oriented, pushing us forward on all fronts. We are raising 2 million to build and launch our product, the next generation of entertainment in terms of tech and business approach. And we invite you to act and be part of this future. I need to go back, but I urge you to stop at our booth and see with your own eyes a preview of the company. Scan this QR to be the first group to play with a beta. Thank you very much. Thank you, R. Thank you. Thank you. Stay safe. Uh, uh, Or's co-founder, Amit is here. So there, there is a booth here. Please go check out their games. So that was, that was our Europe batch. Next up, we have two Skydeck, uh, two Berkeley uh, program alumni. The first step is a company in integrated photonics. 
This takes some very smart people. Fortunately, this is a bunch of PhDs from Cambridge University. Please welcome the CEO of Way Photonics, Jamie Lee. Hi, I'm Jamie, co-founder of Wave Photonics, and we're building a platform for the integrated photonics industry. For electronics, we've used semiconductor fabrication processes to shrink down circuits to make chips that are foundational to modern life. Integrated photonics is using that same process, but making chips that use light instead. This process is already used at high volume to tackle the energy and bandwidth requirements for data centers. But the reason that we're excited is because now that this process is available, it can be exploited as a platform for a whole host of transformative technologies. This includes quantum technologies, LiDAR for AR and VR applications and autonomous cars, and healthcare and diagnostic sensors. But making these chips is really hard. You can think of it as like making something out of Lego. You put together building blocks until you get the design that you want. But unlike with Lego, here, you have to make all of the building blocks yourself. And that's going to take several years and a team of PhDs. To make things even worse, unlike with LEGO, where you can use those same blocks to make a castle or a submarine, for photonics, you tend to need to use different building blocks for each application. So we're making building blocks so that our customers can just put them together into the designs that they want. Our scalable, repeatable process means that instead of taking several years to make these building blocks, once we know about the fabrication process, we can get the designs in a couple of days. This image on the right is one of our wafers being tested, and our designs outperformed the designs from the foundry that made the wafer. But crucially, our designs worked right the first time. For transceivers alone, the market set to be 9 billion by 2030, but my belief is that this is just the start and that integrated photonics will become commonplace in consumer and industrial devices shaping our everyday lives. If we look at just a few of those end applications, the end market size becomes 330 billion. And that means that a platform for integrated photonics design is worth about 2.5 billion. We already have JDAs, uh, joint development agreements with Tales and LOIs from Tales and Cambridge Consultants. And we have partnerships with EDA companies to make our designs more accessible to our users. We've also won and led 1.5 million pounds worth of UK government grants, working with target partners and customers. We have a staged business model to allow us to both get early revenue and maximize the long-term value we can capture. In Act 1, we directly license our designs to customers. Because we own these relationships, we can then work our way into the supply chain using our technology to interface between designers and suppliers building a marketplace. And that lets us see the full product development life cycle, which sets the stage for the, stage for the third act, which is making our own circuit IP, targeting high value applications. Our target customers are large systems companies working on including integrated photonics in their non-telecoms products. This means we can add a lot of value quickly. We can become the default as these applications scale to volume. The standard existing uh, component libraries tend to be poorly optimized, but are almost exclusively at the telecoms wavelengths. The other ways that you can get these components are either very slow or very expensive. So our scalable approach uniquely allows us to target the full range of integrated photonics applications. And we have a great team. Matt and I did our PhDs together in Toshiba's Quantum Information Group in Cambridge. And I met Mateusz in Quant Finance, where he'd spent 10 years using stats and high performance computing to model derivatives. Last year, we were joined by Zhang Wo and Friedrika, who both have integrated photonics PhDs. And we have Ming and Mark on board, who've both built their own startups and worked for the large semiconductor and EDA companies. We're raising our seed round of 1.5 million pounds. And 700k of that is already committed, and we have a lead in place. This unlocks a 2.2 million euro EIC grant, which more than doubles the resources available for development from the seed round. We'll use this to build our technology into a great product and get recurring revenue from five customers. So whether it's 
quantum technologies or diagnostic sensors, the future won't happen if we can't take advantage of light. If you'd like to help us enable that future, please come and speak to us at our booth. Thank you. Thank you, Jamie. All right, last pitch. Have you ever been on a plane and taxiing down the runway and wondering, are you going to crash into something? So did the founders of our last startup. Please welcome the CEO of Evitato, Andrew Mokes. Thank you very much. As mentioned, my name is Andrew Mokes. I am a co-founder and chief product officer at Evitato Technologies. Evitato has a vision to automate airport operations. It's not because we're a bunch of engineers that love robots, but it's because it's what this industry actually needs. You don't have to take my word for it. The International Air Transport Association, who's responsible for setting industry standards, has said so themselves. What they've mentioned is that outdated infrastructure, as well as shortage in personnel, is costing the industry billions of dollars every year. What they've stated is that in order to meet the rising uh, global air travel demands of the future, we really need to integrate new technologies, including autonomous systems. So what is actually the problem? Well, delays cost the industry more than $75 billion annually. By 2026, there's going to be a shortage of aircraft technicians, and ground incidents cost more than $2 billion, uh, sorry, $20 billion annually. It's kind of easy to understand when you watch this. This is a very normal towing operation. However, this tug driver does not notice this cargo loader that's out of place and ends up running that engine into it, and that costs $30 million for that one incident. That doesn't include the downtime of that aircraft. So what, we're, what we are building is a platform uh, which is really going to open the door for autonomous uh, vehicles and systems at the airport and beyond. You can think of it kind of like an ecosystem communicating with vehicles and giving them the information, the data, and the decisions that they need to make the operations uh, of you know, daily autonomous operations. Airports are really perfect for this environment, uh, or perfect environments for this, uh, because they're cl uh, closed and controlled. And what that allows us to do is really create a new marketplace uh, with new revenue streams uh, and opens up a lot of potentials. So we're starting with the most valuable asset, which is the aircraft. We have a, data, um, a tech stack that uses uh, three-dimensional sensor fusion uh, where we're able to identify, track, and then detect where assets are moving on the airfield and within hangars. We have a business intelligence tool that feeds crucial information back to our customers, uh, giving them risk assessments as well as uh, reports on their daily operations. We can give them close call uh, incidents like you just saw there, which is information that today they really don't understand anything about. We can do lots of things, but our end goal right here is to move towards uh, full autonomous towing operations. What's really nice is we have products in the field with customers that are solving uh, their problems that they have today, while also being able to collect the data that we need to train our AI algorithms for full autonomy of tomorrow. So we have a core group of customers that we're currently working with, and they're using our technology for collision avoidance uh, while they're towing their aircraft. What's really nice about that is they're able to actually save the uh, labor cost by reducing the number of personnel they need to tow the aircraft by up to 40%. You'd be surprised. Some of these movements require upwards of 20 people to move an aircraft. Tying that in with our business intelligence platform, our customers can save on average around $120 per movement, which might not sound a lot, but when you consider there's more than 500,000 movements of aircraft every single day, you're talking about billions in potential savings. We're coming up to a really big milestone, which is our first uh, million in, in revenue. Um, and we've done that through a combination of hardware sales, as well as annual reoccurring software licenses. And we've done it with, a, like I said, a core group of around 10 customers. And what we're really working on now is to sell deep into those customers and expand within their global operations. And over the next 18 months, that gives us the opportunity, uh, a potential opportunity of around 8 million in revenue. When we start you know, looking, deeper into our pipeline, as well as opening up our cock, uh, cockpit tool, business intelligence tool, uh, and offering subscriptions to that. We're talking about 50 million in potential revenue uh, over five years. What we really want to become is a uh, standard for global, um, or for, for ground support equipment. We're working with some key partners, uh, manufacturers, who are delivering first vehicles uh, of Evitato solutions within the end of line uh, uh, vehicle itself. 
When we start looking at integrating other vehicle types from the airport, we're talking about potentially bringing in millions of asset movement, uh, billions of asset movements every, uh, annually. So we're far in front of our competition uh, when it comes to being a leader within this industry for this type of technology. What we've been able to do is package our technology in a way that it's easy for our customers to roll into their current roll out into their current operations, while providing you know a tool that really helps them solve problems that they have today, all with that end goal of being able to work towards full autonomy in the future. Founded uh, Evitato with my co-founder Alex, and we had a guiding principle, which was uh, we really need to surround ourselves. Uh, by people who are much smarter than us. Uh, we have more than 50 years of aviation experience on our team and decades of experience within the robotics and software development. Uh, the same goes for our advisors as well as uh, our investors who are behind us. Uh, one I would like to point out is TechNexus, where one of the LPs is actually an industry-leading maintenance aircraft maintenance organization. So we will be raising a Series A early next year, uh, which will help us uh, really accelerate our sales as well as grow into new markets. And we'll combine that with around one and a half million of grant funding to work with the US Air Force. So what I really want to you know, point out today is I'm not here to sell a pipe dream, right? I'm here to talk about uh, and showcase a, a revenue generating company that with the right uh, leadership, the right direction, the right resources, really has the opportunity to change the way that airports operate in the future. Thanks a lot. All right. Thanks, Andrew. Okay. That's a wrap for Demo Day. How was it? Awesome. Uh, Anders, please come up. I'd like to invite the Skydeck and Cryplo staff. Please come. I would like to thank them. We're going to get one more round of applause. George, where's George. George? George. George, come on. Come on, come on, come on. Our head of Europe. And then the rest of the staff is busy doing stuff. But let's do a nice big round of applause once more for our founders. Yep. Thank you, guys. Thank Amazing you, thank job. You. Thank you, thank you. All right, let the networking begin.